You can hear something. Can you hear me better if I talk into the microphone? Hello, 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 hello. Now I hear you. Bueno. Bueno. Very loud. I'm very sorry.
so it's a start. It's Go. Test, test, test. Probably ask Good. the guys online if that's too hot or whatever you need to do. Test, test. All right. They hear it. Test. You good to go? We're good. Okay. All right. First thing we want to do is give away some more stuff. Woo! Stuff is fun. Fun stuff. So I need somebody to come up here and pull. Oh. Name out of the hat. Who wants to do that? Phil. Another Rambo tablet. Now, you guys, your odds are going up because people are leaving on the left. We've got some attrition. So, we've got Jennifer Gray. Come on down. Congratulations. <laughs> Where's Jennifer from? I know. She didn't. She's from uh, Colorado Springs, I think, isn't she? And the last one from Colorado Springs, Kathy Schwab. Uh oh, nobody's jumping it down. Oh, ouch! Must ouch. be oh, present yeah. to win. Must be present to win. Most sick as we don't want to ship anything to anyone. Yeah. Oh, from Denver, Colleen Sologub Sobering. Did I pronounce that right? Colleen. Colleen? Okay. Must be present to win. What? Oh, he's oh, crashing the stage great. with additional prizes. Excellent. More free stuff. What's it with Colorado Springs? You're from Colorado this Springs. Is, is that what you're doing? We'll Alan King. Oh, there we go. Hey, microphone. All right. We're going to give this to Dave on Friday. We have more oh. prizes. All right. So. Uh, and this is one of the most coveted pieces of swag we've ever had. We've given away t-shirts, given away pens, all that kind of stuff, but that, that is all very boring. We have the TechSmith Titanium Spork. Oh, the spork! And you need to give one to Phil because he's a presenter, so you get one automatically. And I've already got a spork. I don't need it. So I've had one of your titanium yeah. sporks before. You guys have them. Yes. All right, and we have quite a few of these. Nice. So we have eight titanium eight sporks to give away. Sporks. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Steve Schultz. From Denver. Steve, Denver. 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 Steve Schultz gets a spork. All right. Would you like to distribute the sporks? I will distribute. Here you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have uh, international flavor here. We have uh, Quinn Barrett from Calgary. Yay. Good luck getting out their customs. I had, actually, I had seven, or I had like uh, 10 or 12 of those things in my bag, and I made it through security, so <laughs> it'll be okay. You might want to check it, though. Oh, yeah. All right, we have, oh, back to Canada. Uh, we have uh, Graham Johnson. Graham? Graham? Ooh. I better catch a flight. Maybe just got bored on the map for years. Yep. All right, uh, Kathy Hones. Yay! All right. Oh, seriously, international flavor. Patricia Ashby from London. Yeah. Don Streeb from Phoenix. No, nope. no sport for you. Yes. <laughs> Take the All right. Uh, Kathy Jackson. Oh, all right. Big sport winner. How many do we have left, John? Three left. Three left. Three more chances at an amazing TechSmith titanium sport. All right. Lisa Ann Johnson from Colorado. She has no excuse to duck out early. Starting to rain, maybe I don't know. Craig Hill from Wisconsin. There we go, Wisconsin. We down to two now? 
All right, uh, Tamara Nudson. Tamara? Nope. Two chances still remain. All right, uh, Sandra Brooks from Denver. All right, Rhonda Galbraith Kelton. Sorry about the name. <laughs> All right, and the final spork goes to Steve Hedgewood. All right. Feel free to email me if you have any suggestions for uh, the best foods to eat with the sporks. Every once in a while we blog about that kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> um, I recommend Mediterranean food. Very good for it. Lots of different textures in there. So uh, keep that in mind. Enjoy the sporks. Well, great. Um, first of all, we are uh, going to talk about the Adam State Credit. Aaron, isn't yes, that Adam State Credit. If you still need to turn in paperwork, um, Jerry had to go home early. His wife was not feeling well. So um, April be out in the lobby as soon as we're done here. She's right there in the cup with the cup and the purple shirt in case you haven't seen her yet. And uh, two things we need from that. We need the registration form of payment all filled out. And then there's a second pile for a survey of the class itself. And we also, we need one volunteer, and it may be that you've already filled out all that paperwork, but we need one person basically to um, take the surveys, sign a piece of paper stating that John and Aaron basically did not fill out the surveys ourselves that somebody else did. And then we'll make sure those get shoved in an envelope this afternoon. I'll let April do that so we don't have to touch them because we're not supposed to. And we'll send those away to Adam State. Um, if you're worried about your personal information, those will be um, put in an envelope and sealed up as soon as we're done here as well. And we will get those shipped. Also, those won't be lying around waiting for someone to collect all your social security numbers, credit card information, and birth dates so we can steal your identity. Although that probably is going to make us a lot more money than selling these DVDs, right? Thinking so. Thinking so. Hey, first of all, we want to thank a lot of people. We want to thank our presenters. If you guys would get around for our presenters, they have been amazing. And we've had a lot of students here, clearly on the panel um, yesterday morning. We've got AJ in the booth. We've got a lot of kids who've helped. My own children have helped. So let's get Austin the in the booth. Austin in the booth, yep. yes. And my daughter has been on the camera all day. Dad, can you please leave me? I'm tired of AJ saved our bacon today with oh, the yeah. webinar. Our, we couldn't get to our Adobe Connect server, so he pulls up this gaming streaming site that he uses and said, hey, I already have an account. It's ready to go. He just logged in, and voila, we have video, audio, and a chat room going for our online people. So thank you, AJ. Yes. If you have a question, ask your students. They know yeah. the answer. Whoa, like, that's, that's pretty cool, AJ. Thank you. Um, TechSmith, certainly. TechSmith has yes, been amazing. thank you. Yes, and you know those guys. Though you may not know this, the Mortgage Family Foundation, which is uh, founded by the people who own Cisco Systems, they uh, paid for every single one of the presenters to fly in here, paid for their hotels, everything, um, and they have been amazing. So we want to thank them as well. And clearly, um, we couldn't do this without this school district. It's an amazing place, uh, and we are very pleased, and I'm sad to be leaving in many ways. So um, the Wooden Park School District, this, this facility was donated. We didn't have to pay anything for our facility here. It really is a, a great school. So thank you for those. And though they're not here, um, there was a couple of guys who took care of all of the breakfast stuff, and they were amazing. And uh, they were here at 6 o'clock every morning uh, preparing the food and getting the coffee and doing all the stuff they did. So slicing and bagels. And the bagels. Slice and bagels. And clearly, it's not possible without you guys showing up and then you guys showing up online. So we want to thank you guys as well. So thank you all. I think that's all the last-minute logistic stuff. Uh, probably one more thing, if anybody can stick around, there's some cleanup that Aaron and I yeah. are doing. So if you uh, don't have any place to go or a flight to catch. Actually, speaking of flights, are you trying to still get a flight, Troy, or a drive to the airport? You're good? Okay, never All mind. Right, never mind. Okay. So Aaron and I kind of wanted to conclude this whole thing off. And as we were thinking about this and what, what what's the right thing? You guys, are your brains are probably full, right? Um, I'm tired. Are you tired, Aaron? I'm tired. How come? Because... I haven't had enough coffee this week. That's it. It's the coffee thing. So, yeah, we're tired, and we're just like, yeah, but it's been great getting to know you guys. But you, we, we sat down with the, uh, the presenters um, Wednesday or whatever, and we kind of made, a, for lack of a better term, the flipped class manifesto. 
<laughs> kind of a weird way to phrase it. But yeah, yeah. We basically, we, try, we sat down and we tried to define what is the flip class and what is it not. What do we believe is good for kids and not? And where do we think, where do we see this heading fit in the bigger picture of education? So we decided to just talk about that. Is your clicker broken? I'll drive. Click. There it is. Oh. You, st you stand over there. Maybe it's close proximity. I don't know. Okay. What do we believe about the flipped class? Well, first of all, we believe in learning. It's all about learning. Okay? The class students, you know, I was a good teacher before the flipped class. I was great at standing in front of, you know, 20 kids, 30 kids, whatever was in a class, and my kids were pretty reasonably successful for 20 years. But since I've been doing the flipped class, I've changed my mind. I'm the old guy, Aaron's the young guy. It's probably easy for him to switch. But you know, this is my 25th year in education. And um, I really believe in learning, but not teaching. See that picture? <laughs> I don't believe in teaching. Now, I say that, but what do we believe in, Aaron? OK, yeah, don't misinterpret that. We believe in teachers, not teaching. But we believe in teachers as chief learners. In fact, I heard Phil said, I tweeted it out, he says, it's good that you are the, not the greater in chief, but the learner in chief. I just love that quote that he in one of his sessions um, this afternoon said. You know, um, teachers as chief learners. Um, if we are not learning, then we probably uh, shouldn't be in front of a group of kids. And if we're not modeling learning, yes. that's what we need to be doing for our students, that showing them it's OK to not know the answer. It's OK to not have all the information, but knowing where to go to look for it, teaching them how to do that, and teaching them to be curious and trying to foster that and wanting to go look for answers and not being content with, I don't know, don't want to know, I'm going to go back to watching TV. So, You know, and that's somewhat frustrating sometimes when, um, you know, there are some teachers in some schools, and the reality is you're here, so you're not one of them, who are kind of done learning and just want to kind of do what they've always done and never change. But uh, this society changes. I mean, we're in a world that is information rich, right? It's not like you've ever asked the question and said, at least in the last 10 years, I don't have enough information. No. Um, there's a reason there's a phrase TMI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That means too much information. Yeah. So. <laughs> so also, we really want to come to say that the, the flip class, what we believe about it is that it's not just about the videos. Now, without the videos, though, we could never have done what we've done. And not just what we've done, but as you've heard, such a plethora of people using it in such different ways. It was just so cool to hear um, April and Jason, particularly non-science math guys, uh, to explain about what they're doing in their classrooms and taking an idea we had five years ago, or whatever it was, to a whole different level. To, and wow, it's just it's cool. So, so anything yeah. else, Aaron? No, no, just emphasis on the just, that the videos are an essential piece to this, but it, and that has allowed us then to go so much deeper in our classroom. So they're an important piece, but don't get stuck there. So that we believe the flip class is about interactivity, okay? Kids helping kids, teachers helping teachers, kids involved in their learning. It's really not the videos that make the difference. It's what you can do in your classroom that is so different and so just out of the box and just so good. I mean, the relationships that, that I have developed with the students. In fact, if you remember Ben, who was up here just a minute ago, or uh, yesterday morning, whatever it was, uh, he texted me like five minutes ago. And he said, hey, Mr. Bergman, I just saw you on YouTube. So it's like, cool. He's on just, an advertisement. Yeah, we're on an ad on YouTube. It's like, well, really? <laughs> but uh, so it's all about that interactivity, those things that you can now do in your class that you could never, ever do. Also about collaboration. Now, what I mean by collaboration is just really broad. Um, in that first picture, it's teachers collaborating with teachers. It's, it's kids collaborating with kids. It's teachers collaborating with teachers. And it's teachers like making videos together. It's just, it's all about collaboration. Now, if you say, and I've talked to some of you, said, I, I don't have any to collaborate with. I'm in this small school, and I'm the only science teacher. I'm the only history teacher. And I'm at this conference. I've got nobody to collaborate with. While we were sitting at the dinner the other night, we started having this conversation about some technology. And Troy was there from TechSmith and a bunch of other people. And then we started just brainstorming some ideas. And some were asking, you know, since Aaron and I are going to be ge geographically split up, could we still make videos? And so we started thinking about this and thinking about this. And then we figured out, of course, we could. Why couldn't? 
the software of this world is so cool. We can do this. The, the, the technology is there now, and we figured out how to do it. We haven't done it yet. We're actually going to try and model it up here, but uh, there's no internet in here. So uh, <laughs> that's a problem. So we were going to model where someone was going to be somewhere else, and we are going to make a little video together, the two of us. So what would be wrong with somebody doing this demonstration we did on that first day, boiling water? So if we are boiling water here in Woodland Park and it boils at 92 degrees Celsius, if I am making a video with Sally Smith in Chile, maybe not Chile because that's the mountains, uh, somewhere flat, uh, Brazil, and we are making this video together. You can make these videos together. You, you know, the, the banter that Aaron and I have together, you could do that with somebody else. They don't have to be on your site. How cool would that be? You could do that. Now, uh, I, I want to challenge you guys, whoever kind of figures out technically how to make it all work. There's different software. Uh, we thought about Skype, but apparently Skype and Camtasia don't play well together. So, um, but it does play well with other things. Figure that out and then post it to the Ning. Make a, a screencast of how you did that so that we can all know. So it's all, you could do this collaboration. I Speaking just of the Ning, you have, well, you have 130 people that you met this week here, yep. plus another 1,200 that are on the Ning. And you have quite the network of people that you could collaborate with and brainstorm ideas with. I mean, Brian Bennett was here. Brian has been teaching for two years in South Korea, OK, in a small school where he was one of, I think, two science teachers and the only person using this model. Yet he was not doing it in isolation. So please, you know, and I want to echo, I think Jerry said this this morning. He said, you know, use that Ning, this uh, uh, social network. For those online, it's vodcasting.ning.com is the website. Um, you might type it in there, Sarah, or whoever's up there. Sarah, whoever's up there. That'd be very cool because um, that's where you can find people of like mind who are interested in the, in the flip, and I think it'd be really, really cool for you to do that. So collaborate, collaborate, collaborate with each other with each other, with each other, and then also with your kids. Um, we could have, uh, one, one teacher we haven't talked about, there's this guy named Eric Marcos in uh, California, and he has his students make the videos with him. He has the students make the videos. Oh, they just make the whole videos. Yeah. Oh, cool, I missed that. So they're making algebra videos or something, some, some math. Thing. Math, yep. And frankly, like we've mentioned, John and I are not good about student-created content. That's the next step for us. So maybe just have that as a goal out in front of you. Get the kids doing as much of this as they can.
we'll see how the, uh, the mastering model goes, but we'll play in front of the flipping. This year I plan to uh, prepare my video cast, my video both live uh, video cast in my classroom, but the outside of one of the rooms are going to be part here, so I can do the comedy as well. Hey, my name is Arlene, and we are the chorus of Prince Bay Teacher at Alton High School, and I'm very proud. My name is Valerie, and I teach chemistry, and I'm going to try to help you. And thanks to Deb Wolf and Brian Bennett for making that. That was amazing, amazing. So, and we're humbled that you guys are going to flip. <laughs> we believe that the flip is about personalization, the chance for you to work one on one with kids. It is no, there's no more rewarding thing as a teacher, and you know this, but this just makes it possible than to just get with kids, to talk to them, to just. You know, I, I said this in one session, you know, it allows for those to affective moments because you're sitting there and the kid says, I'm having a hard day. Well, why is that? Well, then you learn more about them. And Have you get a seat the on the couch. The seat on the couch, as Aaron talks about. You know, there's just that opportunity that, you know, I, I taught 20 years as a, as a stand-up you know, stand and deliver teacher. And now I could never, ever go back, well, probably because of the kid stuff. Uh, it's scalable. This can be brought into a large scale. And we, I want to show you a clip of an entire school that has flipped their school. So let's watch one more clip. I think we 52%, and there's students from one of the two students there in their, their English, math, and science class, and even 28% is too hard for social studies. My name is Greg Green, and I am the high school principal, and the third coordinator is grade 6 and 5. We evaluated a very, very last year from our freshman, and we found that in English language arts, our freshman are filling at 52% rate. And in mathematics, we're filling at 44% rate, uh, science, and 39% rate, and then our social studies at 28%. Rate. And, and as a principal, it's, it's just impossible to have that done around the school. So you continue doing the same thing and think you're going to get a different result is isn't going to work. So uh, we sat down and said we've got to try something different. Because we felt like the class had, you know, was probably the most crucial time to fill with students, we decided to flip it and, and try spending more time working with the students in class and having them come get the lecture and the lessons at home. This allows us to get more than one you know, I'm not speaking to you. I haven't had of done it in the past, we kind of group at the time the students and the teachers that should work together in uh, going over here and learning the information. Uh, my name is Mike Wright. I play here in the last eight grade. Uh, if we do try to have the truth, you know, it's different. But I don't think so. Last year, my son was a freshman in the class, and he was struggling, and uh, he'd have a problem, and say so problem number one was difficult for him. He couldn't do it at home, so he would give up. So his, all of his homework was empty, blank. Well, now I'm sitting there. I can see his frustration. I can go help him. I can get him past number one. Now he can do two, three, four, five. He's got trouble with problem number six again. I can help him. Um, well, but the biggest surprise is, is the results when we did go to the floor model. Uh, yeah, I was kid, no, unfortunately, doesn't go there anymore because they managed to that far behind. He had to go to the high school. There was no class faster at high school. By reducing the instruction model, it's going to give us a dramatic reduction in percentage of student And in the new LA, the percentages went from 52% to 49%. Math, 
44 percent to 13 percent. In the science, we went from 41 percent to 19 percent. In the social studies, we went from 28 to actually under 10 percent. And so, what we've seen is a, is a, is a huge reduction in the failure by reversing the instruction model, which isn't costing money. I'm a husband. I'm a father. And I'm using the for my Those of you joining us online, both of the videos we just showed are uh, on the Ning. Uh, the Greg Green video has been on there quite a bit. He's very active on the Ning as well. Yeah. You want to ask a question of Greg Green, he will answer it, right? And the one that was just produced today um, is on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash learning, then the number four mastery, and it's also on the Ning, Ning as well. So look around for it if you didn't see that very well online. So you can take it and uh, make it, you know, a big system-wide deal like like Greg Green did. Doesn't mean you should always, but uh, he seems some dramatic results in his school. So yeah, how so possible is that? Scalable from one person in the only classroom in a school doing it to an entire institution doing it. But again, it's not about using a cookie cutter model. It's right. it's utilizing and leveraging technology to do what's best for your kids. And it's customizable. And so what started here with Aaron and I spread to Deb and Jason and Jerry and all the people up there and Phil and and others we couldn't find Brett pictures for other people we couldn't find pictures for and uh, just it's so powerful that it's and now it's spreading to you guys as you said in the video we're gonna flip we're gonna flip we're gonna flip we are just well I think we're humbled that that this is happening and we just think it's going going to just change a lot of kids' lives and frankly it's going to change your life too as as you, as educators who are here in the room you're going to be kind of tired. <laughs> Phil's fading. But that's okay. And you know it's growing. I mean, I don't know if you sat in on uh, Jerry's session where he talked about the Ning and he says, you know, of course, if the present growth rate continues, there'll be 14 billion people on our Ning or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> now, there'll only be 7 billion people in the world at the time. Yeah. 14 <laughs> billion people will do it counts or something. I don't know. But it's growing. I mean, it, clearly, we were overwhelmed with the number of people who wanted to come to Woodland Park this year. There's 30 or 40 last year, and there's 140 of you this year, and a bunch of more people online. So, clearly, and so, yeah, we're just, that's cool. And we believe that the flip model is an answer. It isn't the answer to the problems in education in America. Okay, it is an answer. Yeah. Again, we are very we're so leery of cookie cutter. Take it out of the box. So you, you adopt a new textbook at your school, right? And you get all the supplemental stuff, right? That goes with it. How many of you have ever used every single supplemental piece of material and only use that in your classroom? Yeah. Zero hands. Right. Yeah. So don't a model and try to do it exactly like somebody else has done it using all of their stuff because it's not going to work in your position. Take the idea and run with it and do great things with it and make it better than it was when you got it. We believe that a teacher needs to essentially ask one question. There's one question that should dominate your educational career and it's this. Maybe. What's best for my students? Is it the flip? Maybe it's not. That's okay. What's best for my students? Once you decide and figure out how to answer that question, go do it. Thank you for coming. We so much have appreciated having you guys coming here. And uh, we look forward to hearing the great things that you are going to do. So, thanks. We're done.